Well, hello there, everybody. This is what I've been up to. Last I showed you was I put the metal on the outside frame. Told you about what I was thinking about doing with the uh, with the A frame there, and this is what I come up with. I got um, this is a bed rail as you can see over there it's an angle iron and it's welded this one's welded right here that one I actually cut a notch out of and folded to make it look like that and I am not a professional welder it's a hobby I just bought my second welder ever um, short of making grills I've never made anything other than that. Made a few tiny repairs on my car. But, um, this is what my welds look like. They look like everlasting gobstoppers. What's the old saying? If you can grind it down and make it look good, you did good. If you can't, you did great. <laughs> or is it the other way around? I don't know. As long as it holds, I'll be happy. See right there, that big old gobstopper. But anyway, um, I made the frame out of tube steel. Went all the way around with it. Welded it in the corners. This sheet steel, something I had. I told you, I got it. it was packing from a air conditioner that somebody had gotten. A commercial air conditioner. And I made it, wrapped it around the uh, the frame. Um, then I made these A frames here to support the wheels at the height I wanted, as you can see. When I did that, then I put this piece between the two of them after I put them on the frame, and I decided to go with this because it was close to the mark where I was at. So I just butted that up against it, and it was even with that one over there. It worked out perfect put this in here to support the axle the axles inside here I did not weld it in place as you can see I can turn the axle thought I'd try it first see how it turned out um, the axle turned out to be a perfect length it was 36 inches and you, as you can see I've got the same amount on both sides sticking out I put three washers behind it to keep the tire from rubbing on the a-frame and they, they spin perfect. And then as you can see over on that side there, they right height. Um, they stick out a little over the sides, which is fine by me. I was wanting them underneath, but then when I saw that the axle was going to be perfect, I said, I'm just going to leave it like that. It, it made it a little easier because I didn't have to put supports in here to hold the day frames up because they couldn't be welded to the sheet steel. That wouldn't be strong. But, um... Anyway, um, after I did that, I welded this piece here in to weld the tongue into, and then the tongue comes down and welds into here, and I've turned this hook like this in case I ever wanted to hook something to it, uh, you know, to pull it out of something, I don't know, who knows. Um, I thought it made sense at the time, we'll see it down the road. And then this is how I made the tongue. I just cut here, here, and notched this out at an angle. And I'm not quite sure why I did an angle, but I did it on both sides. And then I rounded the corners off. And it works well. It fits right on my, my lawnmower. And I've got it turned upside down just so I can show you the weld, you know, how I welded the frame together. I'll, let me flip it over and I'll show you what it looks like hooked to the lawnmower. Okay, that's what it looks like attached to the lawnmower. I would have liked for it to have been more level but that hitch is lower on a tractor than a normal hitch would be. I'd have to rig me up another hitch on there if I wanted it higher. Maybe put a spacer on it, I don't know. But this trailer weighs about a hundred pounds I have to say. 
but I can sit on it and it doesn't flinch. <laughs> But um, there you see I've got the pin through it and it has this little cotter pin on the bottom right there. This clips around it, holds it in place. And I just have to be careful cutting corners because the axe will stick out a little bit and they catch things if you're not careful. But <clears throat> now my next um, part of this project is going to be putting sides on it. Wow, that thing is really sturdy. It doesn't move when I get my big fat ass up off of it. I think it's trying to rain at the end of the day. But this is another piece of that. Um, sheet steel that I got and made the bed out of. <clears throat> this piece here would probably go here like that. That's what I was thinking of putting it. I think if I did that then I put the sides on it bolt them in the same way it would be about the strongest that it could be. I also thought about bolting it to the sides kind of like this but I don't know that would leave me the full surface of the bed to do what I needed to do with and if I put it on here it's going to be I'm going to fix it so I can take it off if I need to like with bolts or something um, I don't want sharp corners sticking out like that and I figure the way these are cut they initially had tabs here to slide into those slots now I'm never going to be able to do that again because I can't cut no tabs but you see how this corner is bent like this that's where the other side slid up underneath there so I was thinking I could use that same idea to um, design a rail kind of like this. See, actually, this would have went down here. Yeah, it would slide in there like that. It's jacked up because it can't go in that groove right there. Let's see how it wraps around the corner. That's the way it would do on top of the handrail. Uh, you know, on top of the, the rail if I did that on the side. It would just wrap around each other like that. As you can see, that one's built the same way this top cap is. This one has a groove. So, that, that side would slide into it. And I'm thinking, <clears throat> I've got plenty of room on both sides. What I'll do is leave part of this side, say about how much of it, where it'll fold over and say, if I was to notch this out, instead of cutting that off, um, I would just bend it in like that and use that side to wrap over onto this where it can be bolted together together and that would give that side some strength <clears throat> I was thinking about using like self tapping screw or something like that I'm not sure yet because um, the points of the screws will be sticking out I know I don't show a lot of um, actual work in my videos just because like in this case I was welding I didn't want to get my camera messed up you know it might mess up the iris or it might catch a spark or something and melt the lens and I don't want to do that but you know I try to keep you in the loop as to what I was doing with this the A-frames were 
15 inches a piece and I welded them together um, crossways it's 29 inches long ways it's 60 50 59 and some change it's supposed to be 60 inches but I think when I cut it I you know that leave the line take the line thing I took the line so I was short an eighth on where I cut it so it's about 59 and a half long and uh, the tongue was actually just one whole piece which was six it was five foot 60 inches so you know that's what I did the part that goes in the middle that the tongue is well to right there it's actually a little shorter than 29 inches because I didn't want to weld it onto the sheet metal in case I ever you know it rusted and I ever wanted to take it off and put uh, wood on it but um I'll show you when I finish the sides what I'm doing here I might break this video up into a couple of different parts I'm not sure but um it looks like it's fixing the rain. I might tinker around with it a little bit and uh, give you some updates as I go along.